Hello and welcome to Beamer Folk. I don't know about you, but I've always found the sound reproduction of flat screen televisions to be inadequate. They are, I suppose, barely adequate, but at modest volume you always experience distortion, uh, inadequate stereo imagery, and, um, and when you try and turn the volume up because you can't quite hear it, you experience the diaphragms in the speakers rattling around and hitting their end stops. So it's not really a very pleasant experience. But over the years we've had a number of flat screen televisions that include uh, Samsung, Hitachi, uh, JVC, Toshiba, and all of them seem to suffer from this problem. Uh, in my humble experience, the Samsung seems to offer the best um, sound reproduction, but even that's not very good. So the logical move here is to go out and buy a sound bar. Uh, sound bars uh, I've experienced and I've um, sampled a few in shops. Uh, you can pay anywhere between a hundred pounds and maybe a thousand pounds and the hundred pound, two hundred pound sound bars to my uh, experience are not a great deal better than the, than the um, sound systems within the flat screen television itself. So I kind of looked for, um, typical of me, uh, um, a cheaper solution that actually improves the situation without spending too much money on it. And uh, I'll present now my solution. Probably not a solution to everybody, but if you're a bit practical and you can do this, wire this up, it doesn't involve any soldering or electronics knowledge. You just need to wire this up. So this is my solution. These pair of puppies were bundled with a PC computer about 15 years ago, so they're quite old, but I've always found their sound reproduction to be quite impressive. That a few, uh, They only deliver, I would think, probably no more than 5 watts per channel. Their sound reproduction is quite good. You can currently still pick these up on eBay for about a tenner but I would what I'm suggesting here is that if you, if you have any of these multimedia speakers with this type of connection they might work. You have at the front here of course a volume control and on and off and you have here a power uh, cable connector that's 12 volts DC and uh, you have a 3.5 millimeter audio uh, left and right uh, speaker connection. I failed to mention that the speakers that I've got are called Diamond Storm speakers and they appear to be still available, obviously not new second hand or use but um, let me now just uh, uh, show you um, what's needed to connect this up to a flat screen television set the first um, the first thing I'll show you is this it's a as far as I can tell it's a games selector switch our setup includes a Toshiba hard drive recorder, so I wanted to switch between the sound output from the hard drive recorder and the television output through to my Storm speakers. And to do that you need a, effectively a switch that will switch between A and B. And uh, let me turn it around the right way. There we go. And effectively you've just got two inputs here with video and sound and you select between one and the other with that sort of rotary switch in the middle and then you've got the output here which is video and sound going to your uh, speakers themselves. Ignore the video aspect, I don't use that, all I use this for is switching the uh, audio. The other item required is a phono jack to 
scarp connector uh, and you've got a switch on the top of that that goes in out and uh, I select that to output because we want the sound coming out of the television set into the selector and into the speakers. You need um, a DC barrel jack connector. All of these items, are, I'll um, put the links under the video there in the description so that you can uh, see where I purchased these for, from and get uh, uh, details. So you've got a barrel jack uh, connector which connects the power supply to the uh, barrel jack of the speakers. You've got a power supply here. I, I had this power supply as it were in stock. It's a 12 volt 2 amp. I probably wouldn't go to a 1 amp. I think a 2 amp is probably the right way to go. Uh, when it comes to these power adapters uh, preferably always choose uh, um, a UK or your home supplier. Uh, there's a lot of concern and worry in buying these power supplies from unknown sources. They have been known to catch flyer so you know um, apply due diligence when buying power supply adapters. Um, but as I said I had that actually in stock. You've got a couple of leads here one is a 3.5 millimeter to two phono plugs uh, that takes the uh, 3.5 millimeter jack plug of my speakers through to a phono input which is there phono output i should say and then you've got a phono jack to phono jack lead probably half a uh, half a meter in length that one's probably 0.3 of a meter in length and then you've got uh, a second phono um, two phono to uh, two phono plug lead uh, and that's about it total cost to me bearing in mind that I had the power supply I had the speakers total cost to me was about 12 pounds and 12 pounds for an adequate sound reproduction, I wouldn't call it hi-fi, is actually pretty good going. Certainly it's comparable to, I would say, you know, £200 um, soundbar, uh, you know, the, that I've experienced, that I've tested. Uh, so it's doing pretty well, you know, for more or less a tenor. But if you had to buy the speakers, the, the multimedia speakers, that would be another tenor. And if you had to buy the power supply, the 12 amp, the 12 volt DC at 2 amp, uh, that would have an additional charge of maybe another £10. You might get it less than that, but buy it from a reputable source. I've deliberately moved the speakers out of shot simply because what I really wanted to play with is the connectors. Uh, let's put in the games selector here, switch bank here, <coughs> into the center and uh, let's start connecting this stuff up. Uh, first of all the power supply, uh, that's not in shot, let's put it in shot. There's the power supply, let's hook out the end of the, the barrel jack at the end of the um, connector there. Uh, yeah, okay, that's okay there. Um, there's the adapter, you plug that into there and you plug that into the power supply of the speakers. It's as simple as that. No problem at all. Okay, let's put that round there. The next thing to do is deal with the 3.5 millimeter sound lead and that is this one here and what you do is very simply let's pull out this lead a little bit here that one there what you simply do is plug the 3.5 millimeter jack into the socket there and you end up with left and right phono plugs put those on the audio sockets 
here, I don't know whether you can see that, the audio sockets, put the black to white there and the red to red and that's that. So now effectively the speakers are actually wired up but I'll carry on with this because um, uh, it'll show you how the inputs are configured. The um, our hard drive Toshiba recorder, the sound output is um, a phono, our phono sockets. So what you do here is plug the left and right to the input here, one on the white, one on the red, there, and that's simply phono plugs on the output. When it comes to the television output, it's slightly more complicated. Let's move that to one side. Insofar as the sound output on our flat screen television, which is a JVC, is produced via the SCART connector. And uh, all you need is this uh, SCART to phono adapter with the switch switch to out and just get a phono plug to phono plug plug that into there <laughs> there we go one goes into there it goes into there don't again worry about the video leave that undone it's not needed and then you just plug that into the black to white there and then red to red and there we have it that is the basic setup and that will record sound from a hard drive uh, recorder and uh, the and a flat screen television through to the two speakers this is the picture of the speakers in situ behind my flat screen television as this is a sound project uh, I really would have liked to have demonstrated uh, the sound quality of this system. It's very good, certainly better than the television speakers themselves. But in the UK here, we don't have fair use of copyright material. And I wanted the sound source to be from the television itself, which would mean uh, copyright material. I could, of course, generated something on the PC uh, to demonstrate the sound effect. But that would be just connecting the multimedia speakers up to a PC. And as that's known, that's not the point of this project. Uh, so I'm a bit stuck from that point of view. But nevertheless, um, I'll just go through the setup the way it's, um, the way it's presented here and uh, hope you understand. Evidently in the United States, they do have fair use of copyright material, but it's not applicable here in the UK. Um, on the left hand side here you can see the SCART connector with the DIN connection and the SCART connector is plugged into the flat TV. That goes into one of the input uh, sockets here of the game switching unit. The other input is from the uh, hard drive recorder which is underneath this assembly and that's the phono plugs plugged in there and that goes into the other input of the game switch uh, unit here. Uh, then you have the output of the game switching unit that goes through into the 3.5 millimeter jack plug, which is here, and the power supply lead. Now there's the little power adapter here, uh, the 12 volt 2 amp power adapter, and that plugs into here, which is, uh, which is the DC input to the active speakers. I'd like to add a couple of disadvantages with this system. One is pretty obvious. There isn't a remote control for volume. So uh, there's no sort of easy, you know, you ha you'd have to get up and adjust the volume if needed. And if you want to mute the volume through, say, the adverts or whatever, then this system becomes a little clumsy. You can get active speakers with a remote control. They are available. But my little setup here with these diamond storms don't have that. And it doesn't bother me. I just set it to a volume and I don't really need 
um, a remote control or indeed to mute the volume. I tend to play films from DVDs and, uh, yeah, you know, there are no adverts on there, so it's not a problem. The other issue is uh, latency. Uh, if you have the sound volume of the uh, television screen up and the sound volume of the active speakers, these speakers, there's a very slight time uh, difference between the two sound sources, which kind of make it sound a bit echoey. Well, the solution to that is to drop the volume of uh, your flat screen television set uh, and then the problem goes away. Latency with flat screen digital television sets is a constant problem that has not really been solved um, intrinsically to the television itself. Um, adding auxiliary speakers the way I've done here uh, kind of adds to the problem. If you push the mute button on the television, that's fine. That does it very simply and easily. Uh, but you end up, of course, with the mute sim symbol on your television set, the, the picture that you're watching, like a watermark, which I don't really like. So what I tend to do is just turn the volume down on my remote control to the flat screen television and everything is fine. There you are. And if you, um, if you do this type of setup, if you run these speakers, I hope you enjoy them. I, I certainly do. And what an inexpensive way of solving this issue. This is Beamer signing out for now.